Welcome to Scholar Sauce. This is our second episode in our video series on factoring trinomials. In this episode, we're going to look at three different examples of factoring trinomials that are on the sort of easier side of factoring, so not too complicated. We'll look at more complicated examples in our next video. If you want to know where each of the examples are, you can click ahead to these three timestamps and you can jump right to the examples that we're going to talk about. All right, our first example here is x squared plus 7x plus 10, and we're going to use that method that we showed in the previous episode. If you haven't watched that previous episode, click the link down in the description and you can jump there and see how we're going to use this. So we're going to do this via an AC method that removes all guessing. So to do this, we're going to look at the first and last coefficients here, the one in front of the x squared and the one on the 10, and we're going to multiply them together. And when we do that, we get 1 times 10, which is positive 10. Now we need to write down every possible pair of factors that multiply to 10. And we do that by counting. So we've got a 1 here and a 10, because 1 times 10 produces 10. Then we go up to 2. 2 times 5 gives us 10. Then we could look at 3. 3 is not a factor, because 10 divided by 3 doesn't divide evenly. 4 is not a factor, because 10 divided by 4 doesn't divide evenly. 5 would be the next number we check, but it's already listed. And as soon as you get to a number that's already listed, you're done. You have all the possible factors that multiply to 10. If you have a positive number here that came out of your multiplication here, when you do the AC, because you should do it with both signs, it means that the factors here have to have the same sign, because they have to multiply together to produce a positive number. Now that means that they could be either both positive or both negative, so you really have twice as many options here to pick from. What we're looking for is a pair of factors that add to positive seven. So in that case, we know that both our terms are gonna have to be positive because it's gonna add to something positive. If you look through, you can see real quickly that five and two add up to seven. And so that's the pair that we're going to use. What we need to do is we need to rewrite the seven X in terms of the two and the five. So we have X squared here plus two X plus five X plus 10. You'll notice that the 2x plus the 5x produces the 7x. Notice also that I attached an x to both of these terms. That's because the term that we have up here is an x term as well, and that's what we were trying to replace. At this point, if you picked this term correctly, this should factor by grouping, and so that's our next step. We group the first two terms here and the second two terms. Since that's a plus sign, we don't have to worry about any issues with uh, sign change or anything like that. Looking at the first two terms, you can see that they have an x in common, so we'll factor that x out and we'll get x plus two as what's left over because x squared divided by x is x and two x divided by x is two. Here in the second pair, you'll notice that there's a five in both terms. So we'll factor that out. Five x divided by five is just x and 10 divided by five is two. At this point, you can see that both terms have an x plus two and so we'll factor that term out as well. And what's left over when I divide an x plus two out of this first term is just an x. And when I divide an x plus two term out of here, I just get a five. And that's the factored form of this polynomial. Okay, our second example is 6x squared minus 11x minus seven. So following the same method we've been doing, we look at the first coefficient and the last coefficient, including their sign. Six times negative seven gives me negative 42. And what we're gonna do is we need to find all the factors of just 42. The sign here will come into play later. So we have a one here and 42 because one times 42 gives us 42. Then we say is two a factor, we keep counting. 42 divided by two is 21 is three three a factor of 42, that's the next one we're gonna check, and it is three times 14 gives us 42. 42 divided by four doesn't divide evenly. 42 divided by five doesn't divide evenly. The next one I'd pick is six. 42 divided by six gives me seven. The next number I'd try to pick is seven, but that's already here. And as soon as I get to a number that's already on the list, I have the complete set. So that's why you're sure to never miss a guess is because you're actually counting through all the possible factor pairs. Because the product is negative, it means that the these factor pairs have to have opposite signs. So each pair actually has two different forms. It could be negative one and 42 or negative 42 and one. We're looking for the pair that adds to negative 11. And you could go through and try each one of them. 42 minus one is, is 41. One minus 42 is negative 41. Keep going all the way through. But you'll find that the pair that works is three and negative 14 because three plus negative 14 is negative 11. So at this point, we're gonna rewrite the negative 11 X in terms of these factors here. And we we get 6x squared plus 3x minus 14x minus 7. And at this point, we'll factor by grouping. So we'll go here. This negative we're going to have to replace with a plus negative. 
so that the negative stays glued to the 14 and then we can group those together. At this point, we look at what's common between these guys. Both of these terms have a three in the coefficient and an X, so we'll factor that out as a three X. Six X squared divided by three X produces a two X and three X divided by three X is a one. Over here, you'll notice that they have a seven in common, but we wanna make sure that the first term is always positive so it can match that one. And so we'll factor out actually a negative seven Negative 14x divided by negative 7 is just positive 2x, and negative 7 divided by negative 7 is positive 1. You can see that both terms have this 2x plus 1 in it, so that's a common factor that I can then factor out, and I get 2x plus 1 times, if I divide the 2x plus 1 from here, I get a 3x, and if I divide the 2x plus 1 out of here, I get just the minus 7 left, and that's the factored form. All right, our last example is 4 x squared plus 8x plus 5. So to do this with the AC method, we're going to take the product of the first and last term. So 4 times 5 is 20. And we'll write down all the possible factors of 20. So we do that by counting. We start with 1. 1 and 20 work. They multiply to 20. 2 works. 2 times 10 gives me 20. 20 is not divisible by 3, so 3 won't work. 4 works. 20 divided by 4 gives me 5. Now, so 4 times 5 gives me 20. The next number we try to pick is 5, but it's already listed, so we have all the possible factors. Because this is positive, it means that these factor pairs have to have the same sign, either both positive or both negative. And we're looking for the pair of factors that adds to positive 8. Well, that throws out all the possible scenarios where they're both negative, because two negative numbers would add to something negative, so none of those will work. So if we just start adding these up and see if we get a positive 8, we can see if anything works. 20 plus 1 is 21, 10 plus 2 is 12, and 5 plus 4 is 9. None of those add up to positive 8. Because none of these pairs work to add up to positive 8, there's no way to factor this here. So you can actually write down none of these add to positive 8, so not factorable. What's great about this, if you're looking at it from the perspective of a student, is the fact that here you actually have work to show that you understand the method and that you had a good reason for saying it was not factorable. If you're using a guess and check method where you just put some parentheses and signs and you try to guess what goes there, all you'd be left with is, I couldn't guess a thing that worked and there wouldn't be any evidence to show that you knew what was going on. And so if you ended up making a mistake and maybe one of these did add to eight, you'd end up losing all credit because there's no partial credit to get since you didn't leave any work down. So one advantage to this from a student perspective is that it actually shows some of your reasoning in a written form, which is kind of handy if you're trying to get a good grade. Anyway, that's it for this second episode in this video series on factoring trinomials. In our next episode, we're gonna look at some more complicated examples on how to factor trinomials. If you're interested in that, you can click that video here. Or if you want to see a more fun general math content video, you can see something here. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to ScholarSauce, and we'll see you next time.